Today we're looking at King Solomon. Um, and King Solomon was the son of David. And as we spoke about last time, King David desperately wanted to build the temple to Hashem after conquering the city of Jerusalem. And yet, because he had spilled so much blood as a warrior, it wasn't appropriate for him to build the house of God. And yet, when his son, King Solomon, came to power, this was one of the things that he would have the privilege of doing during his 40-year reign. So he was told that he would become king at the age of 12. And King David said to King Solomon, I go the way of all the earth. You shall be strong, therefore, and show yourself a man and keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and commandments and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, so that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn. And for some of you, those words might sound familiar because often they are said to a bar mitzvah boy when he's age 13 as he takes on the commitment of the commandments and is called up to read from the Torah. This is a beautiful blessing that is just as applicable in today's time as it was when King David blessed his son, King Solomon. And we are told that King Solomon was offered anything he wanted from Hashem. And because he didn't ask for riches or success, he asked for an understanding heart. Hashem granted him so much wisdom that he is famous for being the most wise man that ever lived. And King Solomon used his wisdom to compose over 3,000 parables, over a, over a thousand uh, different poems, and to consult with all of those who traveled from around the world. He had leaders from all around the world who came to see him because they heard of his wisdom. One of the most famous examples of this is the Queen of Sheba. And in the 40 years that King Solomon reigned, he died at 52, but in the 40 years that he reigned were the best years for the Jewish people. They were years of unity between Jews. Um, the different groups in the Jewish community were getting on really well, but also it was a time of peace and prosperity when it came to neighbors as well. So this is really the glory days that we're talking about um, in Jewish history, but it didn't last. And when we want to know why it didn't last, as amazing a leader as King Solomon was, he also made some grave mistakes. We read in the book of Devarim in Deuteronomy that it's not appropriate for a king to have too many wives or too many horses. And um, King Solomon, while motivated by really, really good reasons, had too many wives. And this was the issue that eventually led to him losing the kingdom. Though Hashem does say to King Solomon that out of love for King David, you know, we really see the esteem that Hashem held King David and the love he had for King David, that Solomon wouldn't see the throne being taken in his lifetime, but that this was something that was going to remove um, this kingship from King Solomon ultimately, was that he had too many wives. In and of itself, it wasn't a problem that he had so many wives. The issue was that these wives turned to idolatry. And he was harshly criticized for allowing idolatry practices to happen literally under his own roof. It wasn't appropriate that he was married to women who were worshiping idols. Um, Solomon's um, violation of the Torah prohibition of taking too many wives was immense. He actually had 700 wives and 300 concubines. And like I said, his motivation was pure. He, um, he was building alliances. This was coming from a place of peace. So all these different communities around the world, um, he was building alliances with by marrying all of these wives. Um, and it, it, it you know, had nothing to do with, with love or, um, or vanity, but more that he was interested in bringing all of these nations closer to God and thought that it was the way to do so. And yet what happened is he ended up tearing his own household further away from Hashem um, because these foreign wives were um, able to worship their foreign gods and not to follow in Hashem's ways. And this was a real problem. Um, and what we're going to see is that following uh, King Solomon's reign, we see the nation being divided. And in a way, it's kind of the beginning of the end. Um, things aren't going to go well for the Jewish people. It's never good for us when we're not unified. And there are going to be issues ahead as we keep exploring this chapter of Jewish history.